You are watching the 2014 SWAC Media Day, live from the Grand Marriott in Birmingham, Alabama. This is the 2014 edition of SWAC Media Day. Welcome back to Birmingham. Our next guest, Dawson Odoms, head coach of Southern University and coach, uh, tremendous year last year. You won it all. You won everything you can win. That's the SWAC championship. I feel like in some of the conversations I've heard previously, uh, you anticipate fans at least expecting the same thing. Is there a, a, a need to downplay those expectations? Well, I think when you win, I think it's in it's important that that fans you know be excited about your football program but it's a new year I mean I think fans get caught on last year and you know but you got new players you gonna have a new set of obstacles some new adversity that you gonna have to go through as a team but I think together it's all about the chemistry of our football team coming together and putting ourselves in position to win games and if we do that I like our chances. Do you get frustrated at I mean obviously not frustrated from the standpoint of winning the SWAC championship that's that's a given but does it frustrate a coach to a certain degree to have a focus on the previous year, whereas you're trying to focus on the upcoming season? Well, yeah, you know, all our guys here defend, 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 defend. And what, so I try to explain to our team is that you're not defending it because my definition of defending is that whoever wins in 2014 is going to take our 2013 trophy and put it in their field house. Well, that's not the case. It's a new trophy. And somebody's going to get that trophy at the end of this journey. And we try to focus on just the day-to-day -day operations of the program and the process and just be the best you can be. And then at, at the end, everything else will take care of itself. Our rings are a reminder of, of the journey and the hard work that went into the journey. It shouldn't be a complacent part of you. Some people get rings and they become complacent, which prevents them from having the opportunity of doing it over and over again. You know, I, I try to teach the mindset that it's about – let that ring be a reminder of your hard work on that journey. It's the reward at the end. Preseason pick number one in the West. So there's that pressure. But how do you replace a Dre Joseph? Well, I don't think in our program we talk about replacing players. Uh, everybody in our program is irreplaceable. We talk about the next opportunity for someone to step up. And somebody's going to step up and make players for us. By Dre leaving, gave somebody else, is giving somebody else an opportunity. So that next guy needs to be ready to fulfill his opportunity. And so that's what we talk about. I don't believe there's no such thing as replacing players. New guys are going to emerge. It's going to be a new team, and somebody else is going to make plays. And, and that's how we go about doing things. You've already told us in the opening remarks in the ballroom that we can't ask you who the uh, starting quarterback will be at the start of the season. But uh, how do you gauge the performance of those three or four guys that are competing? What's the Odom's uh, game plan to get that one guy in the top spot? Well, I think we, I think those four guys understand exactly what we want, what kind of play we want at the quarterback position. It's just a matter of someone doing it consistently over a period of time. And that's what camp is all about, is giving each one of them the opportunity to perform on a consistent basis. And I think those guys will, I think somebody will emerge. You know, I don't think it's going to be a tie going all the way up until until the first week of the first game. But I think that somebody will emerge, but we keep it an open competition because they're young. So we want them to compete, and we want everybody to know they got an opportunity. And at some point in time, we'll name a starting quarterback. But right now, I think all four of them are capable of being the starting quarterback at Southern University. Is it a fair assumption on my part that I can't ask you uh, who the front runner might be? No, you can ask. <laughs> You're just not going to say, huh? Well, yeah, I'm going to ask Oh, there is a, okay. Yeah. There, there is a front runner. Okay, who is that front? Uh, one of them four. <laughs> well, you know, you, your staff member said that you were on a roll today, so we anticipated uh, such. But uh, let, let me ask this, though, where the quarterback is concerned. I mean, he's the pivotal guy. He's the key player. So do you, where you have a, a uh, f form of sorts where he's got to meet this checklist, or is there something within you that says, yeah, he met all these checklists, so did the other guy, but this is the one. Is there something, some gut instinct that says he's the guy that needs to be the one in charge? Well, I think it's all about how you look at it. I hear you say he's a pivotal player. He's only a pivotal player in pivotal situations. Uh, I think when you look at it, I think everybody would vote that Peyton Manning is probably better than Russell Wilson because of the body of work. But Peyton Manning didn't win the Super mm -hmm. Bowl. It takes a collective effort from all those that are around 
to make that guy stand out. He just need to do his part, and everybody else needs to do their part. That's why I don't think it, it, you got to be great. I think you become great because of the people that are around you. It, you. You make good decisions. That's part of being a great quarterback. And whoever's going to lead the Southern Jaguars in 2014 at that position are going to do it because they, they make good decisions. Is anything less than a SWAC championship this year a disappointment to you? No, because our goals are real simple. That winning the championship is one of our goals, but also winning all our home games is a goal, and winning our in-state battles is a goal. Uh, that's our ultimate goal is to win the SWAC championship, and you know sometimes that ball don't bounce your way. Mm -hmm. You know I understand that's what our guys are working hard to. That's what we're coaching to do, but sometimes you know that other team might just be a little bit better than you on that day, and and that's what we're trying to prevent by getting our guys ready to play. Uh, but we don't look at that until we get to that point. Right now, we're trying to be 1-0, and know, and that comes with a great challenge in playing Lafayette. What is it about Southern University that makes almost every game on your schedule a rival game? I mean, people focus on Southern University. We were talking earlier with Coach uh, Heish Northern at Prairie View A&M. You haven't been in uh, Prairie View for maybe 40, 50 years now, but you're going back this year. I mean, there is a, just something special about when Southern U comes to town. Well, probably because of our fan base. Uh, we have a great tradition. Jag Nation is, is great. They support. They follow. Uh, so I think people understand that they're going to capitalize on that when they play us. Uh, they ticket sales probably could go up and more people will come to watch our team play against them. So we bring fans to the game. So I think that's intriguing from whatever team we play. Um, but the other thing is we are Southern University. And we, our players understand it. Our alumni understand, our administration understand that everybody take pride in beating us. So we have to be on our A game every week because we understand this. It's a challenge knowing that you're, you're looking, that game is looked at from all your opponents from the time you start the season. Everybody want to beat Southern. We talked earlier about Dre Joseph and the performance he had last year. Obviously a great season. Is, is your offense, your defense, is it, does it focus in, and alter its path from a coaching perspective around the athlete, or does the athlete revolve around your coaching plan for a season? Well, probably the first one. You know, I think as a coach, and I've been trying to relay that message on to our assistant coaches, is that don't force your scheme on players. You know, you got to adapt to what they can do. And sometimes you might be able to run the ball, sometimes you might be able to throw the ball. But it's okay to have a philosophy and a foundation of what you want to get done. But also understand that you may not have the players to get that done. So we have to adapt. And that's why I like what we do on defense because we can alter our plan to fit our players. And to me, I think that's what made great offenses is that you might be spread. But if you're not getting that quarterback that you need, you're not getting that receiver that you need, then it's kind of hard to be spread. So we adapt to our players, but we try to recruit so that we don't have to adapt to our players as much as maybe somebody else. Well, Coach, again, congratulations on the championship a year ago, and now you know you've got that proverbial target on your back uh, because of that big trophy that you got a year ago. So there's that added pressure, your preseason pick number one in the West. So uh, I know you got your hands full, but I have a feeling you're up to the task, and congratulations. Uh, we'll do our best uh, to make sure that we represent our side and making sure that we get our team prepared to play. You know, somebody got to be picked first. This year it was us. Last year it was somebody else. And next year it may be somebody else. So, you know, at the end of the day, in the swag, everybody play everybody so it'll be decided on the field. Well, Coach, good to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Dawson Odoms, who is the head coach at Southern University, with us as part of our continuing coverage of SWAC Media Day. We are in Birmingham, and we're coming back to Birmingham after the break.